صحيحه So about a week ago now, Google hosted their I.O. 2018 conference, which you can find on their YouTube channel, and I'll link it in the description below. And the I.O. conference is a way of Google being able to show off loads of software enhancements and loads of new um, software features that Google Android and even Google search platforms and Google in general that they're bringing to the public. And one of those things really interested me, not in, I would say, a completely, wow, this is amazing kind of way, although, yes, it is. But there's also some worrying factors behind it as well. And that thing is called the Google Duplex. So let's go back to this example. Let's say you want to ask Google to make you a haircut appointment on Tuesday between 10 and noon. What happens is the Google Assistant makes the call seamlessly in the background for you. So what you're going to hear is the Google Assistant actually calling a real salon to schedule the appointment for you. Now, most of you probably know Google have their own Google Assistant based on their Android smartphones, and it acts in pretty much exactly the same way as Siri and Amazon Alexa. And it can even be used to control certain aspects of your life if you've got a smart home device um, like the Nest, for example, that controls heating in your home, smart lights, smart speakers, uh, and even works on things like maps uh, and navigation as well. But there's one thing and one feature now that they are releasing called Google Duplex, which to me is an absolute game changer in terms of smart assistance on mobile devices. But it's also something that is quite worrying as well. Now, what we saw at the conference was the Google Assistant or the Duplex phoning a hair salon to book an appointment for the phone user. And this, it's a pretty simple process. All you have to do, very similar to how you do now, is say, OK, Google, uh, could you please phone this particular hair salon and book me this appointment at this particular time? And that now the Google Assistant can just phone the hair salon and book an appointment. So just check out this video for yourself and let me know what you think. So how can I help you? Hi, I'm calling to book a women's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. Sure, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 1.15. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. Thanks. Great. Have a great day. Bye. Now, I think that's pretty amazing. The fact that that conversation just sounded so natural and so seamless. And the fact that Google has the ability now to really mimic people on such a level. Like they were even getting things like erms. Um, or mm -hmm's into the conversation and it's bizarre to know that that's a piece of software that's a piece of AI or that's an AI entity that is able to mimic that telephone conversation and make that appointment for you now what is also worrying is that the hair salon didn't actually have a clue that they were talking to a robot and that's something that I want to go into in a little bit now what did amaze me as well was the fact that the duplex voice had the ability to listen to what that stylist had to say or the receptionist had to say at the hair salon and was able to reply with such precision that it was unable to fool the assistant. And the Google Assistant is even able to put in some inflections in their voice and make their voice go up and down and depending on what they're saying, it just makes it sound incredibly natural to, to someone listening to that telephone conversation. And there's just this real kind of worry around that that when we may not even be talking when when someone phones us up when someone phones me up i may not even be talking to a human anymore i may be talking to google assistant it's just that seamless you just don't know anymore now google i know they have said that they want to be rolling this out in a limited release in the summer so we'll have to look at how that goes and where that's going to be taking us but i can't see this really being on like a widespread availability on any mobile phones anytime soon maybe, I don't know, two years, 
you heard it here first two years. I reckon that's how long it's going to take for these to roll out into the mainstream market. We've been working on this technology for many years. It's called Google Duplex. It brings together all our investments over the years in natural language understanding, deep learning, text-to-speech. So the first reason that I'm slightly worried about this is because the art of the telephone conversation is dying very, very quickly. And I know that I have friends that would prefer to send a text or send a voice message on WhatsApp, even though there's no difference in having a telephone conversation and sending voice messages on something like WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger but they choose to do that instead of actually having a telephone conversation with someone. Now, the second thing that is worrying me slightly is how Google are getting so good at this kind of thing. Now, I, 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 do, not, I do not know, and when I say this, I do not know if this is true, but most of us, the market share of Android mobile phones now is very, very high. And I'm wondering if these telephone conversations and the conversations, especially if we're having with services rather than personal telephone conversations, if someone phones up to book a hair appointment now or books a pizza, calls the plumber to come around and fix your sink, are they listening to those conversations? Have we somewhere along the lines given Google permission to listen to those types of conversations by accepting terms and conditions when we first got our Android mobile phone? I don't know. See how may I hear you? Hi, um, I'd like to reserve a table for Wednesday the 7th. For seven people? Um, it's for four people. Four people when? Um, Day, next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Oh, actually we leave here for like, after like five people. For few, four people you can come. How long is the wait usually to uh, be seated? For, when tomorrow or weekday or for next Wednesday, uh, the seventh. Oh no, it's not too busy. You you, you can come for four people, okay? Oh, I got gotcha. you. Thanks. Yeah. Bye bye. It's been a bit of a culture shock to people with the Facebook and Cambridge Analytica and the fact that people use our Facebook data to mold political campaigns and things like that um so i'm wondering now if google has some kind of in their small print somewhere that they, they have the ability to listen to certain telephone conversations for research purposes every time we phone a business it's it tells us uh do do we mind this phone call being recorded uh any business now records phone calls so do google buy this information from businesses or google listening to our mobile phones themselves it's a hard one, and I doubt we'd probably ever know un unless that information is leaked somewhere. But also the worrying thing about it is the fact that these conversations or this technology could fall into the wrong hands. And now, presently on the market, you probably get these phone calls. I certainly get these phone calls. Is when you get a phone by a scammer and they're asking for your bank details or, I don't know, an insurance claim. Have you had a car crash in the past? Do you have payment protection insurance that you need to take care of? we can help out or I don't know what's, what's something I've got recently oh stockbroker um, trading software that was a, one of the most recent phone calls Apple I got some spam from Apple not long ago not from Apple but from a company pretending to be Apple saying um, is this transaction on your credit card for X amount of money correct did you buy this uh, I can't even remember what it was. Did you buy this product, this album or book or whatever it was on the email? Of course it was spam. I haven't touched Apple iTunes in a very long time, so it, it, wasn't, it wasn't for me. It wasn't Apple trying to look out for me, but it was a spam phone call. But you can generally tell with these phone calls what's spam and what's not. And there are a number of ways you can do that, and one of them is their geographic location, where that phone call is actually coming from. You can tell from regional accents. Um, and you can also tell from kind of like vocal demeanors on the phone and the way that the operator on the other end of the telephone call is acting or sounding when on that phone call. Now, the biggest worrying thing is that the fact that this voice has a little bit of banter. It, it can mimic an actual human being and it can have a laugh and it says ums and mm-hmms and takes natural pauses in telephone conversations that... That is the kind of thing I think that people will use to their advantage to pry on 
the more vulnerable of us. Now, I think there are a number of ways that Google could counteract this, and one of them is letting the person on the other end of the phone know that they're being contacted by an artificial intelligence. They should let them know that it's a Google Assistant that's calling them, or at least a digital assistant that's calling them. But on the other side of the scale, if I got a phone call saying, this is a digital assistant phoning, I would think, great, this is going to be a spam. It's more likely sounding like a spam phone call if there's a digital voice calling you saying uh, stay on the line someone will talk to you this is a digital assistant uh, don't hang up the phone and you think well, great this is just going to be another spam phone call you hear robotic voices all the time saying hi you've won a holiday like click one now to call through to this particular service center and claim your free holiday price you, you get that that's something that you get so I don't know if Google can then implement that on their Google Assistant because people will cease to take the phone call seriously but at the same time i think they have an obligation to let the other person know on the other side of the phone that a digital assistant is phoning them or a google assistant is phoning them i think there's some kind of responsibility there that falls with google to somehow give that kind of information to the to the person they're calling but then on the other side of the scale you've got someone in service like a stylist or a receptionist at a hair salon and they receive a hundred phone calls a day booking for bookings for hair appointments and as soon as a digital voice comes through or as soon as Google would say hi this is your digital assistant phoning they're just gonna hang up the phone they're not gonna wait around they're not gonna talk to you so I do get that when Google are using this technology it's a way of blending in it's a way of blending in to those other phone calls. If you make that voice sound as natural as possible, you all of a sudden blend into every single other phone call that that service gets. And I get that. I completely understand that because no one wants a phone call from a digital voice because you automatically think it's going to be spam. I'm just worried that it's going to fall into the wrong hands and it's going to be used. I, I, know, I know there are scam, phone, scam callers out there already. I know there are scams. I receive them all the time. It's a common thing. But... I think when you are when you start to receive them from a digital assistant, that's when it starts to get a little bit worrying. Because then anyone, anyone who has Google Assistant or this duplex, once it's released to the mass market, anyone is going to have access to that software. So anyone could then call up a business and try and scam it with... <clears throat> I don't know, whatever, however you scam people out of money with fake services or fake bills that have just been collected. And it's going to sound natural. It's not going to sound like a scam phone call. It's just going to sound like a normal everyday phone call that that business could get or that resident could get. Now, the most interesting thing is, are you going to be able to use Google Assistant to phone friends, to phone family and have conversations that way? You've programmed all the topics that you would like to cover with that family from how are you doing to how's the dog, how's, I don't know, if I phone my mum or my dad, how's my other parent, uh, how's my brother, how's life in that country if you've moved away. It's, do you program everything? Are you going to have the ability to program everything for Google Assistant to cover in topics for that person you want to phone call? You don't even have to sit in front of the phone. Just key in, oh, I haven't called my family in a while. Oh, Google, could you please phone my mum and have a conversation with her, please? That's going to be the worst thing to do ever. You're gonna, it's going to sound natural as well. And the worst thing is, is it going to start sounding like your voice? Is it going to start tracking your phone calls on your phone when you make a phone call so those digital phone calls that you make are going to sound exactly like you? They're going to sound seamless. This, this kind of technology, yes, it's very new, I mean, in terms of AI, it's not as good as, like, I don't know, that AI robot that's flo that floated around the internet. Or one, the one that um, hung out with Will Smith. I'm actually made mostly of silicone, plastics, and carbon fiber. Also, I prefer electronic music, but I don't mind 80s hip-hop. It's not as good as that currently, but there's going to come a time where this technology improves and it's going to get better and better and better. And it's just going to become a, a very strange thing I think to look at I mean at the moment now I sat there and watched the keynote session and I thought wow this is absolutely amazing this is this sounds really cool but then 
the position I'm in is this is a cool bit of technology. Like this technology is absolutely amazing. The reason I didn't make this video, the reason I didn't publish a story on technorovo.com, there's a link in the description to that as well. The reason I didn't is because I wanted to sit on it for a while. I wanted to wait a week to see if anything else came out about it. I wanted to gauge other people's reactions online or from Twitter uh, or the comments of other people's videos that have made videos before this one. I wanted to gauge their comments as well. And there is a very mixed feeling about this, especially when it comes to letting people know that, letting that other person know that you're talking to a, a Google Assistant or some kind of digital assistant. I'm sure Siri and Alexa will have this technology soon as well. I just wanted to make this video just to share my thoughts on this situation because I think, yeah, it needs to be spoken about because there's, there's going to become a time when AI is going to take over and it's already starting to happen. You don't have to make phone calls anymore. You can just tell Google to do it. Google, uh, could you order me a pizza, please? Pepperoni, get it delivered for nine o'clock. Thanks. So I hope you liked that video. Thank you very much for watching. It's something a little different that we wanted to start doing is talking about relevant news around the world and what comes out of these keynote events and various companies and what kind of technology they're releasing. We just wanted to have a quick discussion about that on camera just to really keep you guys in the loop as well. If you enjoyed this video though, do please hit that like button. Please do subscribe to keep up with all of our latest tech and gaming videos. And also let us know in the description what you guys think about Google Assistant, whether you think it's a good idea for now maybe, or whether you think Google should just shut this project down right now before it gets out of hand. Let us know in the comments below. Also check out our Amazon affiliate links, which are in the below comments of our videos. That helps us out a lot if you uh, ever want to purchase anything that we talk about on Technoivo. Check that out as well. Uh, and also, thank you very much for watching, and we will see you in the next video.